global warming is a myth, according to 400 scientific papers published this year. It's all over. 120 years of science has suddenly been proved wrong. The news has been copied and pasted around the blogosphere and, of course, repeated on What's Up With That. But before we start putting out the bunting, let's just check where this claim comes from. It's from uh, James Dellingpole, writing in Breitbart News. Dellingpole has a history of getting his science wrong, so it pays to be sceptical and check the information, doesn't it? Especially since Dellingpole said he doesn't read scientific papers. So whose work did Dellingpole interpret? He says the list comes from a blogger who goes under the name of Kenneth Richard, writing in No Tricks Zone. And his description of what the papers say is a little more nuanced. 400 scientific papers have been published that cast doubt on the position that anthropogenic CO2 emissions function as the climate's fundamental control knob. But we all get what No Tricks Zone is driving at. The 400 papers cast doubt on the conclusion that CO2 is a major driver of long-term climate change. So let's check the papers and find out if they really do say that, or that global warming is a myth. Let's look at the papers Dellingpole found most convincing, the ones he put right up front. The first one is easy before we even check it. It's been widely suggested from both climate modelling and observation data that solar activity plays a key role in driving late Holocene climatic fluctuations by triggering global temperature variability and atmospheric dynamic circulation. The key word here is late Holocene. So we're not talking about the current period of warming that's got everyone so concerned. The time period is spelled out in the abstract. We suggest that solar activity may play a key role in driving the climatic fluctuations in northern China during the last 22 centuries. Still, that is an amazing discovery, right? The sun may have played a key role in driving climate. Well, not really. This observation was so underwhelming it wasn't even mentioned in the title. The fact that the sun has had a strong influence on climate change over the last 2,000 years in fact, the last 11,000 years, that's been known for some time. I've covered this in my climate change series. And the reason is simple. For the last 11,000 years, carbon dioxide concentration has been pretty much stable, between 250 and 280 parts per million. So carbon dioxide obviously hasn't had much of an effect on global temperature during that time. To use an analogy, CO2 and solar activity are like two heaters heating up a room. When the CO2 heater remains stable and the sun heater is turned up, the room warms up. If the sun heater remains stable and the CO2 heater is turned up, that also causes the room to warm up. So it's not surprising, as shown in this and other papers on the list, that since CO2 has been stable for the last 11,000 years, it's other factors like the sun, volcanic eruptions, ocean cycles and so on that have determined the short-term climate and solar fluctuations have determined the long-term climate. None of that contradicts the fact that when CO2 levels rise, as they have been doing very steeply over the last half century, the temperature also rises steeply. In other words, after 11,000 years of dormancy, we've turned the CO2 heater back on, at a very high setting, while the sun heater has been turned down a bit. And the result is that the room is warming up pretty fast. The next paper simply emphasises that point. Periods with few sunspots are associated with low solar activity and cold climate periods. Periods with many sunspots are associated with high solar activity and warm climate periods. And that may well be true for most of the period the paper was looking at when CO2 levels were stable. But over the last 40 years we've seen a downward trend in sunspot numbers that is not associated with a cooling period it's been associated with a very strong warming period, which confirms the conclusion that the CO2 heater is back on. So that doesn't debunk the theory that CO2 is a major driver of climate. It's quite consistent with it. I'm going to come back to the next paper in a minute, but you get the point. 
The highlighted papers here are just looking at past warming when CO2 levels were stable. You can check the rest of the list yourself. It's not hard. Sometimes you don't need to go any further than Dellingpole's summary. Modern climate in phase with natural variability, he says. But the two papers Dellingpole highlights are looking specifically at precipitation, not climate as a whole, let alone temperature. And they're not looking at the world, they're looking at Tibet and northwest Australia. Neither of them is saying or even suggesting that current global temperature is in phase with natural variability. Their research is perfectly consistent with temperatures being in phase with a steep rise in CO2 levels. Climate influenced by natural oscillation, like El Niño and La Niña? Yeah, sure, no one disputes that. During a period of La Niña, the Pacific Ocean sucks in heat from the atmosphere, and during El Niño, it spits it back out. But these are short-term redistributions of heat cycling over a few years. No one's suggesting in any of the papers that this means CO2 is not a major driver of global temperature. As we go down the list, the papers get more bizarre. There are papers on how wind farms may pose a threat to bats and vultures, and how wind farm blades are being wasted. I'm struggling to see how any of this has to do with these papers casting doubt on carbon dioxide's role in global warming. I said I'd come back to this paper, which, like the others, is looking at past climate, when CO2 levels were stable and had little or no effect on changing temperature. And like the others, this paper's findings are perfectly consistent with CO2 as a major driver of climate change. But it goes further and specifically endorses the conclusion that man-made forces are affecting global temperature. That's what anthropogenic means. And that's totally contrary to what Dellingpole and No Trick Zone claim, it says. Now that could be regarded as a slip, if it was the only paper on the list that did that. But it's not. One of my subscribers cited several other papers on the list that also endorse the strong link between CO2 and temperature. I checked, and he's right. One of the papers is by Abrantes et al. No Trick Zone points out that the paper says the transition from warm to colder climatic conditions occurs around 1300 common era associated with the wolf solar minimum. OK, no surprise, the sun influences global temperature, as everyone knows. But what No Trick Zone didn't tell you is that the paper also says today's climate goes through a warming shift caused by the increased release of human-generated greenhouse gases, such as CO2. It's right there in the introduction, totally contradicting the claim that the paper cast doubt on CO2-induced warming. And this paper by Williams et al. also on the list concludes increasing anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere characterise the period with best data coverage and global temperature during this period are exceeding the estimates of natural variability. Here's another one on the list which says that forcing due to solar cycles is much smaller than forcing due to anthropogenic increases in greenhouse gases. And this one, also on the list, says that anthropogenic impact due to the burning of fossil fuels is the most important driver of climate warming in the 20th century. And this one, also on the list, says that a recent warming signal may not be the result of a natural modulation, but the result of an increase in greenhouse gases. So while No Trick Zone, Delling Pole and What's Up With That all claim these papers debunk warming caused by CO2, in fact they do the opposite. They endorse it, while other papers on the list are completely consistent with or unrelated to global warming theory. And I haven't even got around to whether they were published in respected scientific journals. A lot of them aren't. Anthony Watts at What's Up With That was so taken in by the claims of No Trick Zone that he never bothered checking any of the 400 papers. He simply rushed in a headline that claimed climate change had been debunked. Dellingpole genuinely thought the spurious list would cause misery and consternation and horror among those who accept the science. Instead, after a very easy fact-check, it simply causes laughter and derision and a world-weary sigh that this amateur stuff is still going on and is still believed by so many people who don't bother to check it.